All right, we're about to hit the road finally. Uh, my drive shaft came in, we got that, but look what's going on. Oh, Henry has a coolant leak already. Oh, get out of here. I got a cool new piece of my hood rack. Exploded. All right, so we're gonna head back. We're gonna head back to the garage and fix this so we can get back on the road. It's a pretty straightforward fix. Okay, so we uh, rebuilt it, put a new circuit fitting in. We welded up the end cap, put a new U joint in. We do a little bit of grinding where it hit the highway, but Henry gets it. He don't care. So now we just gotta change the yoke on the transfer case, hook back up the transfer case linkage. And then we'll finally be going to Florida. Yay! Henry, what are we doing? Fighting this thing. We're trying to get the the yoke off the transfer case. So we have both of our feet on it, and we're using a jack and a breaker bar. Oh my gosh, it's tight. Come on, come on. Okay. Okay. It's broke free. We got it. What's going on? Okay, so we got the new one on. Here's the old one. All right, when you put your drive shaft together, we figured we'd tell you this, um, after it explodes on the highway and you collect the pieces and, and you put it back together, it's important that when you're putting this mess back together, that you put it in phase. What phase is, is the ear here, or the yoke, the slip, will line up with the other welded end, the other ear, on the other side of the drive shaft. Not the U-joints, not clock 90 degrees, uh, hard welded point straight up to the other hard welded point. That's it. Now it's in phase. Hopefully you didn't bend it. All right, so currently we have a vibration from that dent that I put into my brand new drive shaft. So actually there's a point springs 20 miles from here. We already called them. The guys are trying to balance it out. We should build a board. All right, so we made it to a place. We're gonna take the drive shaft off again. It's it's vibrating at, at 70, so there's a dent in it. But so they're gonna balance it for us just to see what we got. We got our star mechanic here doing some work, and uh, we'll get it balanced. Let you know how it goes. So stay tuned. How's it coming? Um. Well, You've got some perfect tools that are not right nope they have the wrong tools and stupid aftermarket um yeah don't ever don't ever do this don't ever put those in there allen's don't ever put allen's in there yeah no don't those, these things will get you literally in our position here where you don't have the right allen with you because these are not factory parts and uh fortunately erwin over here is giving all she got and i'm coming up short maybe I just get them broke free so I can turn them with this other incorrect tool. There's one. Well, that's one. Ah, uh, drive shaft troubles. You know, these Jeeps are really good for that. They always have been. All right, so we're inside the drive shaft shop and our drive shaft is mocked up. You think if you throw it, it'll come back? Wow, I don't All right, so brand new drive shaft we just put in today. We bent it already. So since it's Friday and they close right now, um, and the manager has stuff to do tonight, he said if it was any other day of the week or any other time, he could totally stay and make us one. But unfortunately, we are out of drive shafts. And out of time. And out of time. So it looks like it'll be two-wheel drive for this trip. But luckily, it's not bad until we hit 70. So I'm going to throw it on his roof, and we'll put it back in in Ocala. All right, so we made it about 100 miles so far. We're actually doing pretty good. Uh, we took the front drive shaft off. It's actually on his hood. Yeah. And now I have no more vibrations. We're doing 70, 75, Passing perfectly. People uphill. I did figure out though, since I didn't put the little gear in the transmission for the speedometer, uh, my Jeep thinks I'm going 110, 115, and there's a speed limiter on that. I never knew Jeeps had speed limiters, probably because no one's ever hit one in the existence of having a Jeep. And if they did, they wouldn't live to tell about it, so you wouldn't yeah. know. So I can go 77 miles an hour, exactly, and then my Jeep does like the speed cut governor thing. Yeah, it's a rev limiter. So if it gets too annoying, we're just gonna unplug it. 
But as of right now, the 77 is perfect for me. It's fine. Keeps me under the speed. Well, at the speed limit. At the speed limit. Yeah, when you get out west, it's 80. Then you need to take it out. Yeah. So we have 700 more miles to go. And we're probably going to be driving through the night a good bit. So we'll catch you in a bit. So we made it to uh, Georgia, and uh, there's a rest stop here. So we're just gonna crash right here for a little bit. Oh, Stephanie tired. Stranger <laughs> danger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's about four o'clock. We're gonna try to sleep here for these couple hours, and then we should get hit uh, Ocala in the morning. Serious camping tonight, man. Out I know. in the wilderness. Careful of those bears. I hear them out there. Big bears. Some big bears. I make sure I wrap my stuff up tonight. <laughs> so Henry's sleeping in his uh, in his tent cut. For the first time, I don't actually have my hammock with me. Cause I got my girlfriend with me, so I think we're just gonna sleep on the front seats for now. Filling in for a little bit. I have my uh, hammock if you want it. And it's not going to fit both of us. Oh, just a little. Just we'll be fine. Pocket. So, uh, good night. We'll catch you guys in the morning. Well, that sucked. Didn't sleep at all. I just tried to sleep right here in the driver's seat. She slept. <laughs> I slept back there. Back there on all of our stuff. It wasn't that bad. My legs hurt so bad though, because I couldn't even stretch them out. Yeah. And also, it was just not meant to sleep back there. I don't think Henry slept much better. I think he's a little wet. A little bit. Well, your morning's about to get a lot better. That's antifreeze. A lot of it. Come here. Looks like we uh, sprung a leak. Yeah, a little one. It looks like the lower radiator hose should just be tiny a clamp. We're fixing some uh, coolant leaks on Jesse's Jeep. Both our Jeeps are leaking coolant. They always leak coolant. There's nothing you can do to stop them from leaking coolant. It's like trying to like plug a submarine with duct tape. You know what? I think it did move. I think it did move too. I tell you, you, you have a plague. You, you have a plague. <laughs> There's demons in this motor. <sighs> All right, coolant line fixed. It was just a hose. The clamp started coming loose, I guess. I don't know. Luckily, it happened here when I was warming it up and not on the road, so we caught it. Then what else we fixed? The idler pulley oh, was, yeah. was loose. The belt was loose, we fixed all that up. It's all just rundown stuff. I'm not really too, too worried. It's all shakedown from the build. It's normal, really. It's just, you know, when you get them done and take these big trips, they break out of state. Yeah, we so. should have, you know, put some miles onto it, which we didn't, but you're gonna have it. Part of the adventure. Yep. Of so, it's boring. four hours from Ocala, where we are gonna head straight there now, and then we'll catch up with you guys there. And the palm trees and the sunshine. <laughs> What are we doing? Ow. Alligator hunting. Ow. I'm dying.